If you're a newbie to motorcycle adventure or an experienced rider or die-hard loyal V-Strom fanatic, you need to get to know and understand the latest offering from Suzuki, the Parallel Twin V-Strom 800 Dual Explorer. At Mad TV, we talk less and ride more and don't spend too much time fluffing over spec sheets. Clubby and I have been out and about on a decent adventure on these bikes with long days in the saddle and we've got to know them pretty well. At times we've pushed the bikes to their design limits and beyond. We've dug under the hood and fiddled with the suspension and we've met with experts to discuss the full potential of this bike, not only for newbies but also those hardcore adventurers. Our approach to this review is going to be slightly different. Clubby and I are city slickers and for the first couple of days we spend time getting to know the bike in city traffic and finding out where that air filter is and how long it takes to change it. And we're also interested in that suspension. The suspension on this bike is fully adjustable and what I'm going to do is when I go away I'm going to take a 19mm spanner to do the preload on the front. You can do the preload on the back by hand and I'm just going to take a long screwdriver and I'll be able to set up this shower suspension as best I can for off-road adventure. And I can't wait to do that. I've got a lot of knowledge about shower. We've, we've ridden with shower suspension on a number of bikes. It's really good and it's really adjustable and the suspension responds to clickers. Look at this, Clubby's taking pictures of these. How good is this, Clubby? <laughs> I've got my helmet on, I'm ready to go. You are ready to ride, aren't you? Hey, how's that? No, they are. They're a good looking beast, mate, and they're a good beast, mate. So, brand new engine, brand new bike. The whole bike is new, isn't it? It's... Yeah, absolutely. Wheels up, mate. 21 inch front wheel, shower suspension, yeah. longer travel, more ground clearance. Yeah. Yeah, everything about it, mate. They just put such a big effort into this new 800. This is my literal first seat sit on one. Ah, it's got good seat height. Quick shifter on this bike is so good. It just bang, bang, bang. No stuffing around. Some of the quick shifters out there on different motorbikes are very sensitive to uh, revs and uh, you know timing and everything. This one isn't. You just go bam, 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 and it goes straight into gear. Yeah. Some it takes about a week and a half, two weeks to get used to. Not this one. It's so good. This is a willing engine, a useful engine for adventure and, and road. Now oh, that's good. Clubby, you've got some good news for V-Strommers and people who love adventure riding but hate changing air filters. Well, we got home yesterday, picked up the two new 800 DEs. Yeah. Mate, I got messages straight away. Ah, oh, you're all talking about it's the dirt ready V-Strom. What's the air filter access like? Yeah. Is it dirt ready? Yeah. Fair question, eh? Because you, you think of some of these adventure bikes, we could be here in the, the Mad TV workshop for hours <laughs> servicing air filters on some bikes. Yeah. So I had a look last night and it's good news, mate. Yeah, so I thought we'd quickly go through the process mate. because the best part of the deal is with working on the air filter on this thing, I don't have to touch the fuel tank. tank. No touching Nothing, tank. no taking cowlings off, no taking tank away. So, okay, seat off, yeah. rubber clip off, retainer strap for the battery. Yeah. You've actually, okay, people will go, oh, what? You've got to disconnect and remove the battery. Oh, it's not that hard. I'm just looking, you can barely see it. Right, there's the for? air intake. Just see where the okay, air intake Okay, that's the top of the air box there. Right. Two so snorkels pointing backwards, backwards that come round okay. the battery. So it's got a pretty good depth if you're going through water then. Yeah, base yeah. of the seat. Yeah. 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 All right, we've got another two 10 mil volts yeah. that hold this plastic battery cage in. That's got to come out as well. And you're thinking, oh, what? Got to do that as well. Can't you just get straight into the air box? This is how you get into the air box. Keep yeah. it all pointing down. Yeah, yeah. okay. Place that away. All right, so we've got a rubber splash flap here. A rubber splash flap. Which I don't know how long that's going to last, but anyway, a little engineer somewhere there in 
Suzuki Land said, oh, we must have rubber splash flap. So that will Come slide off. off. Yeah, yeah, just there is a little splash One rubber splash And then flap. voila, that's our airbox. That's oh, our right. lid, okay? Okay. So you've got two screw fasteners here at the top. Yeah. And then, if I use the official pointers, yeah. at the end of my fingertips, the other two screws at the bottom corners mm -hmm. are located down there. Okay. Phillips heads. Thread on this one. Right, there it is. The airbox lid's away. Yeah. Now, if you carefully pull that up, bang, there you go. There's your air filter. Oh, right. But so then, yeah, what I on. wanted to show you, mate, yeah. someone in the R&D department yeah. has thought, oh, we might lose those screws. Let's put a little capture clip over the top of oh. them, and then that, those won't fall out, you know, for the that's risk you. of then dropping them anywhere down into the guts yeah. of the bike. So, bang, wow, there's your right. airbox. That's your airbox lid. Yeah. Your two snorkels that we spoke about pointing backwards. Yeah. And it's just a real easy seal. Yeah. The indent there goes onto the and actual airbox. And so it's air a, box. Um, oil. Well, uh, it's two. It, it, okay, you've got this tiny, and like, what is that? How many millimetres thick is that? Five right. mil thick. Okay. That's your oiled foam element. Right. It's got the barest amount of oil oh, on there okay. from factory. They call it a pre-filter. That's a okay. pre-filter. Okay, so that's cool, okay. but it's kind of such an open gauze. I don't know how much filtering yeah. it will do. So there's certainly scope there for man filter manufacturers to tweak that. Yeah. That to the side, and then your main element just sits in there, and we grab it on oh, nice clasp, and bang, there you go. And that's it? That's your element. So you've got right. gauze on the inside, paper element on the outside. I mean, that's just, you know, fine for road riding, fine for European adventuring, yeah. but for Australian outback, you know, adventure riding, American dust conditions, yeah. we're going to need, you know, I th I've seen already online K and N already do one of their filters for it. Yeah. It won't be long now before any of like Unifilter, yeah. Funnel Web, any of those sort of core off-road oriented filter brands are just going to make a total replacement yeah. cassette with yes. an oil foamed element. Yeah. And then the airbox is quite big, mate. It actually yeah, goes down good. under oh, there. Wow. It's got a lot of volume. One sleep to go before we head out on our adventure. Just tidying up. So I went with the Diablo tank bag. It's a little bit shorter than the Fandango Pro and just allows me to be very comfortable in seated and standing position, so I'm happy with that. I haven't moved the bars forward. I'm quite happy with that. I still haven't done my homework yet. I've got to remove those um, rubber pegs. Coyote bag on the back is full. It's got clothes. It's got drones. It's got tyre repair kit and a full mechanical kit. Lots of room in the cockpit. Just two little 8mm bolts. Just lift them out. Bam. Excellent. None. Day one of our three day adventure and Clubby and I are heading straight for the dirt. But on the way up into the mountains on the blacktop and freeway, the engine has impressed us. Clubby, we're finally out on these Suzuki's. I was just trying to see how many liners I need to put on on a McLub's day. Yeah. Beautiful day, but man, it's not hot, is it? No. <laughs> hey, but how good are these things? Yeah. That's an easy cruise from Sydney up here to the mountains, isn't it? It's brilliant. Just, and, and the motor is just what I keep coming back to with this bike. <laughs> how smooth is it? It's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of punch. It's very forgiving. Yeah. Um, I, I can't get over how good the engine is. It really is a cracker. Yeah, and what strikes me, it, it doesn't strike me as a V-Strom. Day one of our three day adventure and Clubby and I are heading straight for some dirt tracks that are an ideal testing ground for suspension. We're going to spend the afternoon adjusting the suspension to what I need for my style of riding, which is a little quicker than most adventurers. Our aim is to find out as much about these bikes as we can with the long term view of discovering what needs to be done to prepare these bikes for a tough adventure. In this first section, we're riding at Clubby's usual adventure pace, which is faster than most. It's efficient and safe, and he maintains that speed all day. The track is a collection of reasonably gentle erosion mounds, at times covered in an assortment of rocks. You can see my front wheel regularly leaving the ground. I wouldn't say I was pushing it hard, but it was a good trail pace. 
In these conditions, the suspension on standard settings was coping well with the terrain at that speed. It was soaking up both the smaller and bigger bumps and the bike felt planted and capable and in control. Onto some rocky technical stuff. To push the suspension just that little bit harder was sharp edged hits. It's also an opportunity to get an appreciation of how that parallel twin works in some more technical stuff where the use of the clutch and the lower portion of the engine power is needed. Cubby and I were just commenting on how good this engine is for this sort of stuff. When you're kind of picking through, it just pulls off the bottom really well. And um, combined with that clutch, it, you just feel comfortable. The take up point is clear on the clutch. Clubby hits a sharp rock ledge and the forks bottom out and this tells us it's time to adjust the suspension and hopefully dial it into our riding style, conditions and weight. <laughs> How big was that clang? That was the clang. We'll head back to our fast open section and crack out the spanner and screwdriver and have a go at tuning this suspension for what we want. <laughs> big thud. Yeah, the forks went right through the straight then. This is it. 19mm screwdriver. That's all you need for this suspension. Now, here's another thing strange I found out, is my tools for my KDMs fit, fit the rear and front axle. You're kidding. A KDM's got a 32mm rear axle nut? Correct. Oh! And, um, yeah, oh, so funny. they fit. Does that one fit inside the cutouts of the swing arm on the rear? Yeah, it, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, okay, sweet. So I couldn't get over that, but that's not what we're here for. Don't talk too soon about needing uh, axle nut removal, Dave. No. What I noticed then, I just went through a couple of bumps and it went bam, and it went right, fell right through the stroke. But I've had a bit of experience with shower before. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just tightening up the preload with this 19mm spanner. Now this is measured just in number of turns, isn't it? Yeah. It's not a clicker setting with no. preload, is it? No. So you've got to... Are you conscious of your turns, Dave? Yeah. Fine. Okay, so now I want to increase the compression damping because what was happening was when I was hitting the bumps, the forks were going BAM and coming through. So what I'm going to do, shower forks respond to clickers. And now the rebound damping is here. I've left the bike on, so traction control and ABS is still off. Oh no, that's a lot better. Let's see how it goes now. Oh no. Oh no, I still went through the stroke. The front suspension did respond to the clicker movement where I've tightened up the compression and rebound damping and, and also the preload. So we've wound the preload right up. I'm gonna keep winding the preload now until it finishes up. There was one bump up there. It's a gnarly little thing where you go over and down and the bike's momentum is going down and the, and the, the, the jump is coming up again. And there was a, a, a thud of the forks and it fell through the stroke. But um, let's just up that preload as far as it'll go. It may be just a matter, I mean, we're carrying adventure weight on the bike now. It might be just a matter of getting the appropriate springs for my weight. But yeah, it did respond and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's only those big gnarly G out, just one G out that got it. But um, yeah, if you just ride light and if you saw something like that coming, you get around it. All right, Clubby, well, I'll- You are definitely riding light, huh? You can hear the throttles and hear how you're riding. Clubby said an interesting thing a minute ago about riding light. 
And um, he's absolutely right, because of the torquiness of this engine the, and the playfulness of it, you can ride light very effectively on it. It's got such clean throttle response, isn't it's it? It's a beautiful clean Like you, you can be response. just one eight throttle on off and then just crank it hard and it just responds in cleanly, doesn't it? The afternoon getting to know the suspension and its limitations was useful. Before leaving, we cranked up the preload of the rear shock and set compression and rebound damping to the max. For our style of riding, the conditions and our weight, these settings work well for the remainder of the adventure. For those small percentage of riders who want to push this bike hard, you'll be heading to a suspension specialist for springs and some valve work, but you will be rewarded. The handling of this bike on the dirt is excellent and the engine is ideally suited to being in the dirt, either picking through the tricky stuff or blasting down that forest track. So what do you want to do today, Dave? I want to see someone famous. I had a message last night from someone famous, mate. Right, okay. Our old mate Gilesy. Now you won't, you'll say to me, who, who? Sean Giles? Who's, Who's Sean he? Yeah, I know. I said, well, you know Stephen Gall? Yes. In the motocross universe? Yes. Okay, it's probably talking him up a little bit, but Gilesy, multi-time Australian superbike road race champion and Suzuki ambassador. Come with me. Okay. Right, Come coming. with me. Look at him. This is him. He's a stud. Look at him. But look at the bike he's on. Now tell me what it is, Josie. Good to see you, brother. Hey, Clovey. It's uh, one of my championship winning bikes. It's uh, the GSXR 1000. And how many Aussie Superbike titles are we talking Three about? Three championships, oh, back-to-back yeah, awesome, Superbike mate. championships. Luck, yeah, awesome. so, yeah. But I can't help but notice, Josie, you're not in the leathers, mate. No, I've got You've my got adventure gear, gear on. I reckon he's got intentions, Dave. <laughs> What are you thinking you're doing this morning? Well, you guys have just turned up on the new 800s and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, but now, now a little birdie at Suzuki tells me you've ridden one of these 800s before, but there was a handbrake on that particular bike, if I understand it. Yes, uh, I wasn't allowed to go fully sick on it. You know, I'm sure uh, when I do get to ride it in a bit yeah. of anger, yeah. it's going to be fun Good to ride. ride yeah. We took Gilesy up to the fast flowing tracks and slippery deep gravel roads of Sunny Corner. The completely new V-Strom is more dirt oriented than it's ever been. And I guess these types of tracks and conditions would be the favoured hunting ground for this bike. You got something to show me. Now, Dave, I know you like riding <laughs> close to people with for your film work. Yeah. But is that or is that not proof of Sean Giles, <laughs> superbike champion, not going round you, not going under you, but about to go right through you? <laughs> He's gonna T-bone what me, you reckon? That? What were you <laughs> pair doing? We, we were having fun, we were sliding. Sean, oh, what's your think... what's your take on this, mate? Mate, there was plenty of room there. Could have parked a, a bus in there. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> now so we've had a great morning on the on the v-stroms and probably this is probably your first decent go on it so you've got a probably a better idea of it now so let's just go through what you think of it you know uh riding it from my house out to where we've come riding there um it was like uh i was so impressed how smooth it was yeah i said like when i got off the bike i thought it's like a magic carpet like it was just so plus so smooth and um you know, even the gearbox, you know, the quick shifter. Um, you've got a lot of electronics on there that you can play with as you're riding. You know, after having 1050, I'm sort of going, hmm, one of those ah. 800s is going to be a little bit of fun to get. Yeah, so how did you find the ergos on the bike? Yeah, I've, I find them really 
balanced and nice riding position. Um, I sort of like the 800. I'm sort of sitting into the bike a little bit, which is it makes it really confidence inspiring too. Riding on the road, it was really good, and riding in the in the bush, it was nice and nimble and light, easy to throw from side to side. So, you know, whether you're a, a average rider or an advanced rider, I think it's going to fit pretty much anyone, even a beginner. You know, it's got a low seat height, relatively low seat height. And um, I think it's going to make it a, a fairly easy motorcycle for people to ride. Yeah, so the, the traction control, moving in and out of the traction control is very easy, and it's just on one screen? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, basically, you can just scroll across from your traction control to your power mode to your um, ABS settings. So you can actually, you know, just roll the throttle off and then go back through the, you know, different traction control or power maps or... Uh, ABS settings so it's, it's very easy to use. The bike is far more dirt oriented now what would you do for those top 10 percenters who you know are going to flog this mercilessly in some of the toughest conditions they can find? I think um, you know I'm, I'm pretty happy with the motorcycle as it is but for, for that top 10 you'd want to probably um, you know do a bit of shock work suspension work. I mean pretty much any adventure bike out there that people are doing extreme sort of riding or hard riding, they're all doing um, some s suspension modifications and uh, probably stiffen the back up would be one step, um, putting some more aggressive tyres on it if you're doing more off-road stuff. But uh, yeah, I'd probably start with that and then just see what else it needs. Well, Sean, it's been a great pleasure riding with you today. Mate, I had a ball. Thanks very much and yeah. thanks for bringing up the 800 and letting me have a fang on it and it's uh, been a pleasure and at least today we didn't have a minus nine morning. No. Um, it was quite, quite, <laughs> quite a nice ride and uh, look forward to catching up again. We leave Gilesy in the forest to make his own way back and now with the poking and prodding of suspension out of the way it's time to settle into what adventure riding is really about. Exploring those dirt roads and soaking in the magnificence of this country on a comfortable bike. For the three days away I averaged 20.4 kilometres per litre and on one occasion made 400 kilometres on the 20 litre tank. I found the ergonomics of the bike very good. The seated and standing positions were comfortable for those long days. The standard windshield at the high setting kept my helmet stable but there was significant wind noise. There's beautiful hills around here where we are. We're to the southern end of uh, Musselbrook. We rode the last few kilometres into Musselbrook in the dark and light throw on low beam is unusual in that it's shaped like a champagne glass. Although the throw of low beam did illuminate the sides of the road, I would have preferred a little more intensity to that illumination. High beam provided a long, useful throw. Perfect morning to be out. Clubby and I stumbled upon this farm road on our way up to Barrington. It was an absolute cracker. But you make your own luck and we're always looking for the route less travel. I'm glad you found something you like Something about Tennessee and I'm glad you're sticking around and spending some more time with me. Climbing into Barrington, traction control off, ABS off. Thank you so much. Okay. Good riding. Thank you. I know it's difficult to see at the moment with that contrast from the shade and the light but this road is just a series of you know minor imperfections you know it's just got these little bits of rock embedded in the clay and you know it really highlights one of the strengths of this suspension in that it it deals with the minor stuff really well this is the stuff when you're riding 10 hours that you know really wears you out and yeah, I'm impressed with how the suspension copes with that. Tennessee. Something about Tennessee.
down off Farrington Tops and onto some flowing tar, and it's a reminder of just how good this bike does dual sport. The bike feels planted and stable and turns into corners well, and the willing engine with strong low to mid range makes riding easy and pleasurable. Back on the dirt and I prefer traction control and ABS off. A quick press of a function button on the left switch block and I can quickly get to the settings I want on the fly. I love how the traction control, engine power and ABS are all on the front screen. The off-road settings for traction control are a little conservative and interfere too much for me but would be useful for many riders. Constantly power sliding there. Our next job is to catch up with Clive Ward, also known as the Professor. Clive is a bit of a V Strom fanatic, and it will be interesting to get his take on this new bike. Yeah, it seems like a pretty good package. The motor feels good, bike feels stable, brakes are good. Um, suspension's a bit saggy, but really, most adventure bikes are. Um, so, yeah, some springs, front and rear, a bit of valving, it'll probably come up pretty good for more aggressive riders, but if want to get a bit of air. Um, can't really see too much to, to be disappointed with at this stage. Well, I've still got my old 07. Right. Um, it's the 650. Yep. So it had the alloy wheels, 19 inch front, the really road bike suspension, the shock was terrible. Shocking. The forks were... Not much better. Um, spent a lot of time trying to improve them. Um, got them better, but they still, because of the road bike styling and the road bike framing, they it was very hard to ride as a true adventure bike. Yeah. Um, the, the engine was the V twin. Yeah. Forward backwards. It was a very nice engine. Not as powerful as this by the feel of it. Uh, came in at around 210 kilos. So I think. This one is it, what's this one? 230. 230. With fuel full. Yeah, so this one's a little bit heavier, but it feels nicely balanced compared to it. Um, so yeah, I don't. I think um, big changes all around in going to the parallel twin engine. Um, going to definitely the spoke wheels with the more off-road look. The 21-inch front wheel having the. The leading axle, so on the old one, the axle was directly below the bottom of the fork. So, um, yeah, it's quite a bit different really in every way. Other than the name, there's not a lot of, I wouldn't think there's any parts that would transfer over. Yeah, it's a complete redo, isn't it? Yeah. I'd say they'll be, get a pretty big fan base pretty quickly, I'd imagine, a bit like the Tenere and the Africa Twin, there'll be a lot of accessories available very quickly for them. You'll be able to farkle it as much as you want in whichever direction you want to go. Yeah. After 1300 kilometres on the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE, time to give you my take on the latest medium-sized twin to hit what is already a crowded market packed with capable bikes. My first advice is to throw your preconceptions in the bin as to what you thought a V-Strom is or has been in the past. This is a completely new bike from the bottom up and the strongest hint of that is the leading front axle and 21 inch front wheel which spells dirt with a capital D. Engine, engine, engine. Did I say engine? Without question the standout feature of this bike. That responsive meaty power is so useful for dirt oriented adventure. It may not be the most powerful in its class, but the way it delivers that power determines it is a class leader. Although the 220mm travel shower suspension front and rear is on the soft side, it works well for all but the more extreme challenges hit at speed. A word of caution, if you firm up that suspension, the very comfortable seat height at 855mm will raise to closer to 880mm tippy toe territory for many. However, for those faster riders, the benefit of heavier springs and valve work for the suspension is you'll take full advantage of the frame and steering geometry and find yourself riding a dirt-oriented adventure slayer. It will be that good. 
Access to ABS, traction control and engine responsiveness is simple and effective with it all displayed on the dash and quickly accessed by a function button, an arrow up or down. One of the simplest and quickest systems out there, but the gravel setting interferes way too much for my riding pleasure. After a couple of long days in the saddle, it's clear the ergos are sorted. It's got a comfortable standing and seated position and I like the standard screen, although it is noisy. There was no helmet buffeting and that's good for me. Clubby on the other hand found the screen too small and experienced buffeting and noise. The bike weighs in at a pudgy 230 kilograms fuel full, but hides its weight well. That said, if you've got to push it around or lift it, you're gonna feel it. So where does it sit in comparison to its competitors in terms of its adventure capability? It's more dirt oriented than the CF Moto or Honda Transalp and more than holds its own against the Yamaha T7. The premium end of the market has the edge, but astute riders will be questioning the necessity to fork out $8,000 more for the privilege. The greatest threat to this bike's potential sales is riders not making the effort to understand what the V-Strom brings to the market. A test ride is a must to get a hint of what this bike is about. The bike sells for 18,500 Australian dollars right away, but riders need to do their maths when eyeing off competitors. The devil is in the detail, particularly when it comes to accessories. I think the best way of looking at it is what I'd spend to get this bike to my adventure spec. 18,500 for the bike, a bash plate, $590, and that'd be an OEM one, aluminium handguards, $200, Maybe heated grips, $550, and for Clubby, the high screen at $91. Off-road tyres, and I'd be happy. For the Adventure Slayer option, add about $1,500 for springs and revalving. But just getting the springs for your weight makes a huge difference, and is a lot less costly. A big thanks to Suzuki Motorcycles Australia for supporting this review. Thanks for watching Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV. If you've liked what you've seen, subscribe.